Hi guys, Matt from Howtech here. Today is a great day because today is new product day and we're going to take a walk through the new IC7 standalone digital display dash built specifically for carburetor or mechanically injected cars that have no EFI system at all. So maybe you don't want EFI, you don't need EFI, or for some reason you can't use EFI, but you really like the slick look of the Howtech IC7 digital display dash. Well, this product's for you. This is the IC7 standalone digital display dash, and it gives you all the features of a modern digital display, but without the need for EFI to send information to the display itself. So let's dive right in and check out the feature set of what the IC7 standalone can do. Then we'll take a look at what comes in the box. And finally, we'll have a quick overview of how to set up and configure your new digital dashboard. So the IC7 standalone dash looks just like the regular IC7 display dash that you've probably seen on many Howtech ECU powered vehicles before. And that's because it is just like the regular IC7 display dash, but with an upgrade. This dash also has the ability to interface directly with sensors on your engine to pick up engine temperature, oil pressure, fuel pressure, fuel level, uh, as well as a TACO input to pick up RPM directly from your coil or CDI system, or, and it's also got the input directly for a road speed. This, coupled with the already existing functionality of the IC7 dash to take inputs for your indicators, your park lights, high beams, directly into the 34 pin connector on the back of the unit, and you've got all the information you need to have a nicely functioning dashboard. But it doesn't end there. In addition to working directly with the sensors in your engine bay, you can also expand the functionality of your IC7 standalone display with a number of Howtech CAN devices. So via CAN connection, which is just a digital communication network, you can add wideband O2 sensors, thermocouple EGT boxes, as well as these nifty tire temperature and pressure monitoring devices. Now you really have a platform to put together a very capable digital display setup for your classic or modified non EFI powered car. Okay, so now that I've piqued your interest, let's take a look at what you get in the box and then we'll look at how to set it up. So obviously it starts with the IC7 digital display dash. We've also got a pre-terminated wiring harness to make your wiring a breeze. You'll notice that each fly lead on the harness is labeled and pre-terminated for you. The kit also comes with two zero to 150 PSI pressure sensors. These sensors are safe for use on both oil and fuel and will most likely be used for oil and fuel pressure. However, you don't strictly have to use them for that, but in most cases, we guess that you will, so we've labeled them as so. If you wanna change that, use them for something else, you absolutely can and change the setup in the dash. There's also an engine temperature sensor and an adapter from 1.8 NPT to 3.8 NPT, which should cover most common cooling systems out there. Again, you can change out this sensor for another type if you want and then calibrate in the software, but most of our users will be covered by one of these two sizes. So looking a little deeper at the wiring harness, there's also input wires for a fuel level input, and there's a connector on the middle of it because you may already have a wire that runs all the way to the back of your dash, the fuel level, or you may need this long wire to get all the way to the back of the vehicle where the sender is in the tank. Both situations are catered for here. We've got a TACO input wire, which wires to either the negative post of your coil, or if you're using a CDI like this MSD6A, connect it to the TAC output wire of the CDI. This is really important. You do not want to connect the dash directly to the coil if you're using a CDI unit. Use the output from the CDI. The road speed input is pre-terminated with a three pin connector that'll plug directly into the Howtech GPS speed input module. Now this module does need to be purchased as an optional extra as the gold standard for measuring vehicle speed is a pickup from the wheel speed sensor. Although we rec recognize that many classics and hot rods don't have factory wheel speed senders. So the GPS module is a convenient solution in this application. Of course, we've got the power and ground wires. They make sense. And because the wiring harness is pre-terminated and fully labeled, the task of wiring is pretty simple. You'll also notice that each of the sensors comes with a mating connector. They're included so that if you do need to shorten any of the pre-terminated wire lengths, then you don't have to worry about salvaging the connector or finding one somewhere else. Just cut it off and use the new one provided. All right, so let's open the software and see what we can do with it. So the first thing you wanna do in the software, if you're setting up an IC7 in standalone mode like this, is to load the default setup for standalone mode. 
I'll just pause here for a moment because you may be asking yourself, well, what if I choose to upgrade from a carb to EFI in the future? Is this display gonna be useless to me? Well, the answer to that, of course, is no. In fact, here's a secret. There's actually really nothing special about this IC7 dash at all. Any IC7 can be upgraded via the software to take advantage of these direct inputs into the dash. The real difference here is how you're buying the unit. The standalone kit comes with this pre-terminated harness, it comes with the sensors, and it comes as a kit with a bit of a discount versus buying each of these components separately. But the dash itself is unchanged. It's just the regular everyday IC7 display dash. So when you load the default map for standalone mode, there's some pre-configured display screens, which you can of course change. We've also got some additional videos on the channel covering how to make all sorts of changes to your displays. You can change colors, channels. So if you want to do that, go check out those videos as well. But for now, you've got the freedom to set up the LEDs on the top as shift lights or warning lights, whatever you want to do there. Um, you can configure customizable warnings uh, based on any of your sensor inputs. The odometer function has two built-in trip meters. Personally, I like to use the first trip meter as a backup fuel gauge. What can I say? I'm a realist. How many old cars actually have working fuel level senders? Uh, the second trip meter I like to set up as a service interval to remind me to change the oil every 5,000 kilometers. Now adding things like the wideband O2 sensor via CAN is as simple as plugging it in and displaying the readout on one of the display channels. I love this functionality on a carby car because it gives me a real early indication of when I might need to be making adjustments to the carb before the engine starts performing poorly. And finally, something that I really like, mainly because I don't drive my classic car anywhere near enough, is the addition of tire pressure and temperature monitoring. Talk about bringing a new level of bling to an old school classic, but seriously, keeping monitor of your tire temps and pressures is the best way to prevent a blowout of those crusty old tires on your hot rod. So maybe that's just me, but anyway, you can do it here. Well, there you have it, the IC7 standalone dash kit. Tech up your carby car with a new display that allow you to see all of your critical engine data, just like a modern EFI system. Add on a few extras that you never thought possible on your old school cruiser, and you've got a really cool setup for everyday use. Now, of course, this video is just an overview of what the product is. We will be following it up with a video on how to install, set it up, and how it looks in an old school classic, just like you're waiting for. But you'll have to subscribe to see that one. It'll be out in a couple of weeks. I'm Matt from Haltech. I'll see you next time.